So I've been here five years. Um, been in the five years in January, yeah. Um, came back because we were setting up a, U a New York office, a new, well, US office in New York. Yeah. Um, so I moved over from London, been with the company for a few years in London. Yeah. Um, I got the gig here. So, yeah, five, five years and two months. Wow. Well, for some reason, I didn't think you were over here that long. Yeah. And, and what, what's that journey been like for you? Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy, right? Like yeah. <laughs> everyone who moves to New York from from anywhere else, you yeah. you have this this experience where it's you know highs and lows, and um, overall great, you know. But you have yeah. to go through a lot of experiences to get used to it. Walk me through those early experiences. So I think you know a lot of people say they have a love hate relationship with New York. Yeah. And it, I I feel that way. You know, I love it and it's my home now. But it, there are a lot of you know it's a tough place to live. Mm -hmm. um, I met a lot of expats that moved here a similar time to me from the UK, yeah. and uh, everyone had a different experience. Yeah. You know, I there was me and one other friend. We sort of kept wanting to punch people in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you know, taxi drivers and things like that. Sure. Obviously, didn't do that. I had that experience you know, already. Right. Yeah. Um, and then other people love it from the get go. Yeah. You know, but overall, you don't want to leave. You know, you know it's yeah. some kind of assault course, and yeah. you just want to get used to it. Um, but uh, yeah, and, it's an experience. An assault course that offends your British sensibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Like people walk into the into the street and stuff like that. So, oh man. Yeah. Um, even at six foot three. The, yeah. Still do. It. So I just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to rugby. Yeah. Um, all right. Cool. And so. You're heading up the operation over here. Yep. Tell us a little bit about the business. So we're we're basically we're a global search firm. Um, we specialise in the compliance, risk, and legal space globally. <laughs> um, we're headquartered in London, as I just kind of said before. Yeah. Um, we've got each offices in Hong Kong and Singapore, uh, and then this is our US office, well North America office, sorry. Really. So we cover probably about sixty percent of what we do is in New York, is New York based. Yeah. And then we have uh, coverage of Canada. All across the US yeah. and a little bit of Latin as well. So, would you classify yourself as a search firm? <laughs> That's an interesting point. I guess we'll come on to that. Actually, the terminology, as I'm sure you know, is, yeah. is kind of semantics to a certain extent. But search firm I think you're here means problem. something different to what it does in the UK. And, yeah. And what does it mean here? It, it kind of means a headhunting firm, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you just do retain search, but. I would say we are a search firm, yeah. yeah. But we don't just do retained search, we do contingency as well. So do you have like a, is it a 70 30 split or 50 50? Each location is different and yeah. it kind of, it's a sliding scale, you know, depending on what quarter you look at. Yeah. Um, London has probably, I think, about 50 50. Yeah. Um, we're probably more 65 contingency here. Yeah. Um, and then Asia, again, slides. So. Mm -hmm. But that's nice, right? So mm. you know, a lot of firms either do retained or contingency. Sure. So you know, to have the mix is good. Mm. Um, we also do every level. So yeah. and I, I have always really liked that. So we do kind of global heads right down to two years experience, yeah. that kind of thing. So what uh, what's your head count at at the moment? Uh, four. You're four. Yeah, okay. we've so, kind of gone fluctuated a little bit, but yeah, we're at four at the moment. What's the biggest challenge from gr to growing at a team in New York? That is the biggest challenge. Growing the team in yeah. New York is the biggest challenge of building the business, literally. Yeah. And you, we, I think that, that the main reason for that is that, as you know, obviously, that the industry itself is a very different beast in New York to, compared to what it is in probably the rest of the world, but definitely in London. And um, we struggle to find people that we want to hire. Yeah. We don't. We don't struggle to find people who want to interview, you yeah. know, but it's finding people that we want to hire. I, I wonder, could I anecdotally work out why that is? I, I think you have, you have a slightly different proposition. Yes. And New York, you need, like, 
New York, you kind of have to move, when you move here, it's so expensive. Yeah. You almost need to be younger, <clears throat> have like a, have a lower cost base. And when people, like if I had somebody who was in their 30s, and had a good bit of search experience or retained experience, and they're a bit more mature, and they kind of wanted to, to be let work in their own way, but filling into a system and, and all the rest, they rarely, those people rarely come to me and say, I want to go to New York, because, mm. you know, invariably they have a family. Yeah. It's tough, right? Yeah. Would that, that, that be in and around right? Yeah, that? I think so. And I think, you know, what our offering is, is that we're, we're an established company. We've been in business for 15 years. You know, we are a, we're a market leader across the regulatory space globally. Mm. And we are, you know, one of the most well-established uh, compliance specialists. Yeah. You know, we've added legal and risk in more recent years, but compliance has been the backbone of the business. Yeah. And we are probably, arguably, the most established business globally really? that has specialised in that for the whole time it's been in existence. Um, you know, a lot of firms sort of add different business lines and yeah. they kind of go off it in sort of different... Throw 20 kids out and call themselves a market leader. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, and we, I think, but that said, you know, despite being that established and, and being in business for a relatively long time, we're very entrepreneurial, you know, mm. and I think there's a certain offering where it, it requires a certain type of person mm. that's going to be, you know, working fine with working autonomously, yeah. needs to be very motivated. Um, you know, there's there's not very little micromanagement, for example. Sure. And at a certain level, you often struggle to get that because yeah. people actually enjoy being part of a, a huge team and being to have KPIs and things like that, where they know they've just got to send out their. Young people, know, like I think you 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 reach a phase in your career, maybe. Like I, I'm 35 now, yeah. so I think I would struggle to to, to to do that. But when I was starting, and maybe even the first two years, I bought. I suppose I've always been a bit of resistant of that, but I still kind of bought into it more. I, I, yeah. I think it's harder as you get older to maybe be told what to do on an hourly basis. Yeah, but, but that, that's, I mean, it's a good point because I, I would really struggle working in that kind of environment now, I'm 37. And, but I think there, there's an argument to say that when you're in your 20s and you're, you're, setting, you're sort of setting out, that that kind of structured environment is actually a really good foundation. Yeah. You know? So we've made some really actually really successful hires over the years mm. of people who have come from a bigger recruitment company where they used to work in those kind of environments where yeah. they're micromanaged all the time and they suddenly almost come alive when they join us because it's like they know how to do it yeah. but they just suddenly have the shackles thrown off that you know of the just throwing a load of CVs at the wall and hoping some of them are going to stick because you have to hit your KPIs that kind of thing. Do you find the reverse happens as well that people maybe come from a big firm think they know it all come in and then they're like Oh, actually, the machine was feeding me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think that there's def that's definitely a phenomenon, right? You yeah. Know, you people in any industry, you don't necessarily know the power of the brand that you yeah, work for right. until you leave and you go somewhere else or yeah. set up your own business or whatever it might be. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely happened too. And um, you moved over from the UK. Have, have has anybody else moved over? We've got yeah one guy on the team. We moved from London. Yeah. Um, he's half American, so that worked really well for us. Oh. So um, yeah. We, was he established in the London business before he came over? He, no, he worked there for a short time. So he was established in London as yeah. a recruiter, and then he, he joined our London team and then moved over here last summer. Was there anything that you had to guide him in terms of like New York isn't quite like London, or was it like a straight swap? I think he's pro he's probably not the best example of it because he is half American. He had an American okay. dad, you know, and he spent Maybe a lot of from time your own, in the US. From your own bang your yeah. head against the wall at the start. Yeah, I think for me personally, I think the biggest piece of advice I could give to somebody moving here, and yeah. I see it with Brits, all this, and Brits do this. And <laughs> it's kind of funny because I meet new expats that come over quite a lot through friends or whatever, yeah. or through business. And it's the same, like the same sort of approach every time. It's that kind of they think they know everything because they've been successful in London. They think yeah. and I was kind of I've been, yeah, I've been person, you know, and you, you think you can tra like transplant what you do yeah. in one city, in one country, yeah. to another, and it's going to work. And the truth is, yeah, it might do to a certain extent, but you have to adjust and you have yeah. to understand how the market works and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. you know, what we try and do is we're trying to we we want to hire local people yeah. in the New York market to make sure that we've got that that sort of um, cultural side as well. And that's tough, right? Yeah, yeah. very tough. W yeah. What is the main challenge in finding US recruiters to work for a British home firm, even one that's more mature and like is a bit searchier than a lot of the others? 
I, I don't think there's necessarily a problem per se with getting US recruiters to work for a British firm. Mm. I think it's kind of deeper than that. I think the industry is just slightly different and where you're drawing from here yeah. is very different. So if we were sitting in London right now, yeah. we were talking about hiring anybody and I came to you and said, look, we want to hire this guy doing legal or whatever it might yeah. be. There are a number of different firms that you could take that person from. Yeah. Here, you've kind of got the the big search firms, then you have the kind of slightly perhaps more specialist search firms, and then you've got the big recruitment companies. Yeah. And where we find for us there's a bit of a void is, is where to get people in the middle of it who have done both and don't say they've done, you know, they're not trying to make out that they just done. A lot of people want to do search and haven't yeah. really done search. Sure, they haven't. They don't really understand what it is, you know, it's that kind of thing. So um, I think what we, what we always typically need is somebody who's quite entrepreneurial and quite motivated and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And I think where you've worked in a bigger company, or even a smaller one, yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't always transfer that easily. When, when I worked in a search firm in Canada, I was doing the contingency side, but the search people were just beside me. Even they, even like they would all have researchers, there might just be one real sales person. They weren't all really selling as such, so it's, I think, Cultural differences between what a search firm maybe is in the UK and what it is here is slightly different. Yeah. Um, but I can imagine that if you were to train somebody a bit from a walkthrough sort of page, that would be the transition. That that works well. Yeah, yeah that, that works really well. And I think the the, the really important thing for, for to point to make as far as you know how we work and that sort of thing is that we do, you know, we retain search is obviously part of our business, but we actually apply that methodology to everything we do. Okay. So, and that's actually, that, that's something that sets us apart from a lot of our competitors here on yeah. the contingency side, because, yeah. you know, we always meet everybody, for example. You know, it sounds elementary yeah. to, you know, when you're in London, but so many candidates in the market here in New York are just used to like a one-shot, one-kill kind of approach, yeah. where recruiter calls them up, are you interested in this job? No, okay, bye, thanks for your time. Yeah. And that's not how it works. You know, it's about building networks, building relationships. Um, so when you go to the, when we go to our clients, we genuinely do have a good product to offer because we know their market. When they ask us for X compliance okay. person, whatever it might be, we know that yeah. market, so we can go out. To so you're highly specialised. You're specialised within a ge geography as well as a niche discipline. Not so much the geography, but definitely the niche discipline. So, so you're working compliance jobs all around the place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we at the moment we're working on. Searches in San Francisco, a couple of others in the Bay Area, Chicago, one in Boston, yeah. um, Houston, you know, literally yeah. all over the country. So, um, Are you finding people within those markets or are you moving them from one city to the next? Just find them in those markets. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's actually the other thing, the approach, you know, is that it's kind of a headhunting approach. And I say, always say to people here, we're a headhunting firm. Yeah. So we're not just a, we're not a recruitment company where people are coming to us. We're a headhunting firm, so we go out and find people. Yeah, so people aren't coming in from ads or no, no, no we don't advertise. It's all yeah. kind of discreet. And yeah, it's because that's why the noise. Yeah, until recently and under the radar. Under the radar, yeah, which I will always quite like. Yeah. Although it's hard building a team on, unless you're putting your brand out there. Like you are. Right yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Come Broadcasting back. debut. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's a way of working that I think people either like or they don't. Yeah, you know, and I've always quite liked that. Yeah, I and mean, we we had a meeting today with a guy we placed over here years ago. And he's his own search firm now, and, and he was saying exactly the same thing. And he's like, I mean, our value is that I I know where the people are, and I'm going to go get them. I'm, you can put up your own ad. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah. we what excites you about the U.S. market? Well, I mean. The, the exciting thing for me is it's literally when you're you know when you're building a business here it's literally it's the most exciting thing it's literally it's, it's kind of never ending mm. because it's so huge right you've got uh, New York alone is, is a massive market yeah. but when you start adding the different hubs around the US which obviously there are various different financial services hubs all around the yeah. US and then Canada and you know the kind of bolt on one the, the islands the offshore islands it's just so huge so how, how do you not get lost in, in you do lost. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do we do? You know, where are we going next? But it's yeah. um, it's exciting, yeah. um, and the the best thing about it is that builds organically as as well as you know actively going out and doing business development. Yeah. Quite often, it just builds organically with existing client relationships. Mm. And like, oh, you did a great job for us in New York. Can you look at this role in Houston? Can you yeah. help us in the Bay Area? Whatever you know. If uh, <clears throat> if you could go back to when you first came to New York five yeah. years ago, 
Yeah. Yeah. Anything you would do differently or sooner or? <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's a great question, isn't it? I think I sat in front of Kieran Behan at Fade, and he had three hundred people out in front of him, and he goes, "No." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a funny one though, because I don't. There, there are obviously things you do differently. I think the main thing I would do differently is not have that arrogant thing. That I, I definitely had a bit of that. You know, I was yeah. like, oh, we're, you know, we we know what we're doing. We're, we're a London, London headhunting firm. Yeah. We're going to just, you know, re, re-educate everybody yeah. in the New York market. That kind of thing. Not on a, not a you know, serious yeah. note, but you kind of think that a little bit. Because there'd be serious players who are just like you in America who've got 20 years, 30 yeah. years experience, right? Yeah. Well, that's actually a good point because the market here, as you, you know, is there, there's a whole swathe of our um, competitors here who are of that category, Yeah. where maybe they've had a different career first. You don't get so much in, in London. I keep talking about London, but I think it's a good No, no, comparison. no, it is. I mean, that's where people are going to be listening to this. Yeah. Um, and I think the difference is, is that you, you genuinely have a, a big market share of, of yeah. search firms here who are people who are run by people or the consultants within that those companies are people who have yeah. been bankers or lawyers or whatever it might be you know and then they're just sitting in their office in Connecticut or wherever and, yeah. and actually running really successful businesses yeah. but you don't get that so much in London so no. but you know when you're looking to hire linked to that you you don't you're not going to hire those people no no they wouldn't fit into a structure no and they probably wouldn't want to be hired either yeah you know, they've got their own good thing going on so, yeah of course um, so it does narrow that pool again doesn't yeah, it yeah yeah so it's, it's interesting um, if uh, when you're bringing somebody over from your UK office yeah what advice do you have for them like how long does it take for them to get up and running and can you walk us through what like given what you know now five years what well, how would you how would you be like don't uh, don't do what I do do what I say in terms of yeah I think I think what I what I would my advice I would give to anybody is obviously you've got to have when you when you're moving to a different city wherever yeah. it is in the world you've got to have you've got to back yourself and you've got to believe that you can do it yeah. but that there's a fine line between that and the arrogance that I'm talking about yeah. you know that I had and I see so many other people have um, and, and just on that sorry to interrupt you but Recruitment companies breed that arrogance because yeah. that's part of the process to build you up when you're in there. Yeah. Yeah. So then we have to kind of use you have to, to mitigate that exactly. without chopping their wings off. Yeah. Right? It's difficult. Yeah, it's really difficult. But it's really important as well yeah. because you know what 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 it basically is is no having the confidence to know that you can do it. You can go out and build your brand and build your yeah. market, your network, and everything else. But also know that you've got to learn. Yeah. So you can't just transplant what you did there to here. Yeah. You know. And I think having the I don't know, being humble, I guess, and yeah. realizing, okay, I need to navigate this market yeah. and actually work out how business is done in the US as well, because it's different, right? Any little things on how it's different? Um, I mean, there's lots of lots of little bits and pieces. I think with that, there's a very one thing I love about doing about working and living in the US is there's a very you know, Americans are famous for this, a very sort of upbeat, positive yeah. attitude. We can do it, right? Yeah, which is great. And West American. There we go. We can do it, right, Sharon? Yes, we can. Yes, we can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. You know, that's that's great to work. And I think you find that particularly from a, you know the candidate pool perspective is is particularly New York as well. Everyone's yeah. very entrepreneurial and all opportunistic. Yeah. So everyone wants to have a conversation. You know. Sure. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that people get fooled about when they first come, particularly from London, because in London you have to have those relationships with everybody and actually probably work a bit harder on the candidate side to get people interested in looking at different opportunities. Yeah. And I think one people, one thing people struggle with when they come to New York, first of all, is they're like, oh, everybody's really you know keen on this, but you have to gauge, are yeah. they really keen, or is it just like, uh, you know... Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it can be difficult. That's an interesting point, because in the UK, people are weary to be sold to, yeah. And here they almost like, yeah, come get me. Yeah. So you kind of have to navigate both, both, yeah. both of that. They're different. Yeah, but but that's a great thing because yeah. you can, you know, the, particularly in New York, everybody loves networking. Everybody loves yeah. knowing people, and that's what our business is about. Right? You know, it's just basically making friends with the industry, and, and that's how you do business. So. And say somebody starts starts with you now. How long do you think it takes before they can get up and running and making commission? Are you are you more candidate-led or job-led at the moment? 
So we're we're, we're more job led, definitely. We normally we're pretty much always job led. Yeah. But with a with a candidate led focus, to the extent of, of we're very kind of consultative with the candidates. You know. But yeah. We, we have those ongoing relationships with candidates, and we also keep them posted as and when we have things that could be yeah for them. Um, but somebody coming in, t- again, it depends on the person. Mm-hmm. I think all of these things we're talking about can either make you speed up the process of becoming yeah. profitable or actually slow it down. And that's why it's important to be aware of it. I think when you're coming into the market, and you know, we've got a guy who was billing really good amounts of money within six weeks. Yeah. You know, someone else might take six months. You know, yeah. whatever. So it's just it's a sliding scale depending on yeah. how quickly someone adapts, which is key to what you're saying before. Yeah, for sure. Do you uh, do you find you bump into many UK recruiters here? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's UK everything here. I, right? this I was like, <laughs> we're having lunch and there's a table of them having yeah. a moan about their boss. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we've been in and out of this WeWork so many times. Yeah, that it feels like there's a real movement of UK recruiters here. There is. Yeah, and I think there's. You must have seen that over the last five years, because five years, because we started back like four years ago. And there was like just the big players, and obviously you, but you were hanging out. Yeah, we didn't know you. Yeah, um, yeah, you see, you definitely see it, and you yeah. see particularly when you, you know, when you have briefings at bigger firms that you work with, like uh, you know some golf racket banks. You always mm. in the days when they actually used to do in-person briefings, agency brief- briefings with lots of people, lots of different firms, and a lot, a big percentage of the people around the table would be would be Brits. Yeah, which is always I find a bit of a funny phenomenon, but it's uh, yeah. Your social network huh, is uh, uh, just a couple of questions on uh, your life outside of recruitment. Lots of expats in your life, or are you, a lot of American friends, or how do you find life? A good mix now. Yeah, yeah. it was very expat focused to begin with, but that was that wasn't planned. Didn't they all move? Like, yeah, they did. They did. But I didn't go out looking for expats. It just happened that I had a, one friend here who we sort of fell in with a group of expats, and the group built out that way. Yeah. Um, but there are definitely Americans involved now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing you love about New York? Uh, I just love it. I mean, it's a crazy place, right? You just feel like you're kind of at the centre of. I, I know I sound. It sounds all. I hate saying this in one way, but you kind of feel like you're at the centre of the universe. I know it's an awful thing to say as a, a brick, you know, who yeah. loves London, but it really. You do feel like that. You feel like you put your finger on the pulse and everything. Yeah. So uh, it's just a great place to be with so much energy and, you know, opportunities yeah. and everything. So. And on the other side, any of things that. It's always it's always a double edged sword, right? Yeah, you know, right. That every single day there'll be something that makes you hate this place. But the best thing about it is that it balances it, it's you know, balances it up. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Literally the only other one which I think would be good to cover is just that decision making process oh, for someone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise everything else is complicated. So uh, the best recruiters have choice, right? Yeah. And you have to be pretty good to get a move over here now with the visa and all the rest. And usually we find that they're choosing between three or four different firms by the end of the process. Mm. What, what, what advice would you have for any, any recruiter that's moving over from the UK that has that choice? How, how should their decision making process work? What kind of things should they make? I think what you need to do is there's no formula that you can apply to every single individual and every yeah. opportunity. And I think a really important thing, and this just sounds like advice we give to, to yeah. candidates, doesn't it? You know, but you need to work out what's important for you as a you know, somebody who's looking to move. Um, in terms of what sort of company do you really think you'll fit in? Because, you know, lots of firms are very, very different and yeah. the experience is gonna be very different depending on where you join. Yeah. I moved over and I was on, on my own in, an off, in a no window office for a few weeks and we got a window, you know, it was that kind of thing. Got a window. And then I've got a colleague, you know, yeah. so it's, you know, it's suddenly great. Who did you prefer? But, the, window <laughs> the, the window, definitely. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that, that experience was tough to a certain extent, but it was also really exciting because yeah. it was between, we had a, an existing retained search business here, yeah. but then I was basically adding everything else underneath. So yeah. you just, it can be overwhelming, but I just love that kind of thing. Yeah. You know? But if somebody isn't that type of person who needs infrastructure, needs something in existence, then that's probably not the right opportunity. Yeah. You know, they probably need to join us as we are now, you know, five yeah. years later. Um, but Or if you're the type of person who needs a big, a Walters or Page kind of environment, yeah. then just join one of those companies, you know. Yeah. Um, I th- and I think... It- Everybody sells dreams. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, 
I, I always try and say like, like pick the leader that you gelled with and, and work out how much time that they're going to have for you. Yeah. Like, because like, if you're a Walters or a Page and you meet the director and he's got nice socks, you're just going to see that from distance. Yeah. Like, he, like that person's not going to be guiding you on a, on a daily basis. But if you're going to somebody who's 10 people, they have enough time for you. Yeah. You know? And actually, that's a really good point because I think, and that's a good point with the way we work, is that we're very invested in, in, in our people. And we, the reason we always take so much time over hiring and we only, mm -hmm. we, it's, it's because it's so important for us to hire the right people. Yeah. Because we've got a certain, a certain culture in the company globally and certain people fit, some, certain people don't, mm -hmm. you know, and to get the right person is, is paramount. Yeah. And then one, to us, once we've got that person in through the door, we invest time in them. Right, because what's the point of putting all that time and effort into hiring somebody for, and maybe moving them from London or whatever, yeah. and then they don't work out? You know, it's and we're like that as a company globally. So I think that's another thing. You know, if you're moving from London and you want to go and work in a company in New York, you need to work out how much support you're going to have, how much support you need. You know, everybody needs a certain extent, certain amount of support, but sure. some people need more than others. Um, and obviously, that kind of that support ebbs away the more the person gets up and running. Yeah. But, yeah, I think you, that's a key, key thing as well. And just a final question, because you've given me some interesting points there. Yeah. Um, when you're identifying that person that you, you see as quality, because people see different things in different people, and some people mirror what they are themselves or what a good person that they work with is, what type of stuff do you look for when you're interviewing somebody? So, um, cultural fit to us means somebody we don't do well with egos, you know. I don't think that's something anyone really does. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we're, we're a very kind of flat structured sort of company yeah. where it's, but it's a meritocracy. Does it already not come here? You're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it, you know, it's they've got to be hardworking and got to be, got to have a good work ethic and be um, competitive and want to build their own brand and, and their desk and whatever it might be that they're coming on board to do. But they've got to be down to earth and just want, yeah. and, and I think particularly in New York, you've got to be scrappy and you've got to be a bit of a hustler, and you know, because you need to go and chase business and chase everything, yeah. you know, all sorts of things. Um, so that's really important. And we've hired people, a lot of people in the past globally, but here we've hired people who haven't been having a necessarily great time in their previous company. Yeah. And you might look at their results or whatever and think, I'm not sure about them. But you just get a feeling about them as a person, mm. and then they're an absolute star when they come on board because it's just that different environment that yeah. enables them to grow. So yeah. So yeah. Grant, thanks so much. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, great. That's really, really good. Yeah, really sure you have a look at the phone?